Oh, okay, you got it. Um, we are looking at 4.7. And I've got this new section. Is anyone going to fall asleep on me? Is it too dark in here? You guys want to tell me if you're going to fall asleep with you? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> Okay, before we get started on this, and again, I'm going to argue you've seen this kind of before, but before we get into this, do you, can you remind me, what does that negative one mean? Like if I have a, a function, ooh, what was it? Inverse, very good, Alea. That's exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to make a little bit of a note over here off to the side, um, just a few things of key note before we do some problems. And I'm going to remind you that this part is our inverse trig section. How would you describe inverse like a five-year-old? The opposite. So it's like the opposite. Um, it's going backwards. It undoes it. I like to use the word opposite. Um, we were using um, reciprocal earlier, and I like had to keep fighting myself to not use opposite there. I want opposite to just be with the inverses, not with um, reciprocals. It's opposite, and it undoes what we were doing. Okay, we've seen f of like raised to the negative one, and on those we switch our x and our y. When we're doing it here with our trig functions, remember that we normally do sine of an angle equals a ratio like O over H, right? If I'm going to do the inverse, if I'm going to flip it, that now becomes sine to the negative one of my ratio of O over H, and that's equal to my angle. Okay, so that's what we're doing. I'm giving you sign of the ratio, and then I want your answer to be an angle. So that's something I want to know. Our answer is an angle. Now, if I don't tell you what um, mode to be in, if I don't say degree or radian, you're welcome to give me either. What I'm going to do, though, in my practice is give both. That way, those start sticking in my head. When we were learning the unit circle earlier, I kind of just said, if you know like the, the coordinate points, you're good. Well, now I'm gonna give you the coordinate points. So we need to be a little bit more familiar with some of the angles, especially in quadrants two, three, and four. We're not always good at remembering what like my, you know, pi over seven pi over four is or three thirty or whatever. We gotta know those a little bit better. Okay. The only other thing is that I've got a couple like um, requirements and stipulations on what we're doing here. Good morning. Good morning. We're just doing four seven minutes. All right. Sounds good. Um, I've got a couple of like rules. When we are doing inverse of sine, cosine, and tangent, we're only looking in two specific quadrants, and it's going to be different for most of them. Okay. When I'm looking for my inverse of sine, I only care about quadrant one and quadrant four. Okay. I'm going to tell you why I only care about those in a second. When I'm doing cosine, I only care about one and two. And when I'm doing tangent, tangent is actually the same as sine, and it's going to be quad one and quad four. Great question. Let's go with, let's talk about why we have the ones that we have, and then that will show why we're not doing quadrant three. Why? Or anybody have any idea on why I have one and four for sine? What do we know about sine in quadrant one? Positive. What's sine in quadrant four? Negative. Okay. So in the first case, it's positive in quadrant one. It's negative in quadrant four. Are cosine and tan also positive in quadrant one? Are they all positive there? Good. That's why they all, we're always looking at quadrant one if it's positive. Okay. If it's negative though, tangent and sine are both negative in quadrant four, but is cosine negative in quadrant four? No, cosine is negative in quadrant two. So we're going to go look in quad two for cosine. That's the only reason that one's different. The reason we're not going all the way to quadrant three is it's just like it's farthest away. We look at the two adjacent ones to one. So those are the only ones we're looking at. There are multiple places where sine is positive. There are multiple places where cosine is negative, but we only care about these specific quadrants. So that's something I'm going to think about as we do these problems, okay? Now, some of what we do is going to be just using, oh, you can bring your dog in. We've got a puppy friend. 
Oh, it's a little guy. Over there. He's so little. Yeah, I'll take it. Oh my God, it's so small. Thanks for bringing them by. Oh, no, you're good. Well, let's take a puppy break. Okay. Um, so what we were just doing is we were talking about where we look at sine, cosine, and tangent. And then now as I get into the two, the four problems that I see, do you notice that these are all ratios that we should be familiar with on our unit circle? Yes. So this is the one reason that I made us memorize the unit circle is so that we can go both ways. This is some kind of question they'll ask you on the, on the test on Monday is being able to know what angle I have or what angle I'm looking for if these are my ratios. Okay. The hard part here is there's not a lot of work, but I'll tell you and I'll show you my exact thought process, okay? So let's look at this first one, okay? It says inverse sine of root three over two. Okay, first question, is this positive or negative? Positive. Positive, good. Root three over two is positive. So what quadrant am I looking in where sine is positive? Quadrant one, good. Okay, so I'm looking in quadrant one. Now sine, what is that in terms of X and Y? Y, good. So I'm looking in quadrant one for an angle that has a Y that is positive root three over two. 60. What's my radian for 60? Uh, pi over three. Pi over three. My coordinate point at 45, I know, is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. 30 is a little bit tougher. I remember that's root 3 over 2 and then the 1 half. And 60 is the opposite of 30, 1 half, root 3 over 2. So that's something that I'm thinking about at all times. I'm trying to match it with one of these. So if you need to make note of that at the top of your page, feel free to do that. Now, if we go to letter B, that's another sine one. This time it's inverse sine of negative one half. What quadrant am I gonna be looking in? Four. four, good. I'm looking at quadrant four because it's negative. So quadrant four, and we know sine is X or Y. Y, good. So now I'm thinking what Y value in quadrant four is negative one half. It's a, the 30 degree in quadrant four, very good. And what is my 30 degree angle in quadrant four? What'd you say? 330. Anyone remember what that is as a radian? It's a pi over six. Do you remember what the other part of the numerator is? 11. It's two pi minus pi over six or double the denominator minus one. So six times two minus one is 11. I guess technically these directions say in radians, but it's I think it's okay to practice the degrees as well. Okay, let's jump down, let's do tan. Ooh, tan stresses me out a little bit. Do you know why tan stresses me out a little bit? Why would it? It's y over x. It's not just x or y. It's y over x. So I have to do a little bit of other thinking. Um, I'm thinking about the angle that when you take its y divided by an x, it gives you one. We've maybe done this enough time that you know which one, which angle this is. Would you say 45? Very good. This is our 45 degree angle. Now, is it 45 degree in quadrant one or quadrant four? Quadrant one. Why? Because it's positive. Quad one because it's positive. And so that means it is just 45. And then what's my um, radian for 45? Pi over four, good. Hmm. 
Now, if you didn't maybe remember it was 45 as fast as we did, you can go back to your little um, points and decide what X divided by what, or what Y divided by what X would give you one. They have to be the same number. So that's that 45. All right, and then last one's cosine. Inverse cosine is zero. What quadrant, I guess, what quadrant would I be in? First quadrant. And then cosine is what, your X or your Y? X. So we're looking for an X that's zero. What angle has an X that's zero? Mm -hmm. 90. Zero has a Y that's zero. 90 has an X that's zero. So 90, or what's my radians for 90? Pi over two. Good. In my other class, we did a little bit more of this before we left for the day. So we'll jump to that in a, in a second, okay? Go ahead and flip your paper over because there's a couple other types of problems that I want to do. Um, we will not do those word problems at the bottom of the page, so we'll just do two, three, and four, and then we'll call it a day with this stuff. Before we get into number three, let's look at our calculators. Let's decide how we can use our calculators to put this in. So go ahead and get your calculators out if they're not already out. And it says, use the calculator and round to the 10,000th. Isn't that four places after the decimal? I think so. So when I see something like this, tan to the negative one of negative 1. 1.43, can I just put that straight in my calculator? Yeah. How do I get tan to the negative one again? Second tan. Good. So don't forget it's second and then tan. And then we can just type everything else in. So second tan negative 1.43, okay. Before I press enter though, let's think about what mode we're in. What does the direction say? It says decimal degrees. I don't want the decimal part to freak you out, just means that we're gonna be in degrees. So just go, before you press enter on this, go to your mode and make sure you're in degrees. I am, so I'm just gonna press second mode to quit out and now I can press enter, okay. They gave me negative 55.03. It would be in the fourth quadrant because it's negative, right? We normally go up and around. Here, I'll draw a little picture off to the side. When we do a positive angle, we go up and around to go to that angle. In this case, we're going down 55 degrees. So our angle is right about here at negative 55.0349. I want to go around the positive way. So what do I need to do to get a positive angle? Not subtract it, add it. Because mm -hmm. I want to be positive. I want it to be the positive number. So we'll just take this and add 360 to it. And that gives me 304.965. One degrees. Basically, we were given the negative coterminal angle and we had to find the positive coterminal angle. So that's why we added 362. Okay. Now we will not always add 360. It's just looking at what we got. So this time we got a negative angle. We needed it to be positive. We added 360. Let's go to the next one. It says inverse sine of 0. 0.761. Do I need to do anything funny to that or is it good? It's good, right? So inverse sine of 0.761, and I get 49.5524. And that is a good answer. That's a positive number that works. I'm okay with that. Now, on the next one, it says secant to the negative 1 of 1 1.98. Is there a secant button? No. No. Okay. We normally do 1 over cos when we have an angle. When we have a decimal like this or the ratio, we're actually going to do 1 over the ratio and change this to my cosine. 
So when I flip the secant to just be normal cosine instead of one over cosine, I also have to flip the number in my parentheses to make that one over 1.98. one over 1.98. Second, cosine one divided by 1.98. Oh, gotta do second cosine, not normal cosine. And I got 59.6652. Or five three, I guess. Yeah. So anytime we go from like CK or CoZK, we have to flip the it only happens here because we have the um, secant to the negative first. So when we're doing inverse of secant or cosecant or cotangent, we need to um, flip the ratio, not flip the um, trig function. When we have normal secant, then we flip the trig function. Here we flip the ratio. And we'll actually do an example of that in a second. I'll show you when we do one over when we flip that. Okay, on the next four, we're actually, we've done the calculator, we've done the unit circle, now we're going to do some by hand. And this is going to look like problems that we did back in chapter, earlier in chapter four. Okay, so these four are my last ones that we're working on. We are going to keep them all in fraction form and we're going to use that. And I actually don't really need my calculator right now. If you notice my um, point one is not in a fraction form, could you make that into a fraction form? Point one is the same thing as... 1 over 10, good. So inverse tangent of 1 over 10. So that's what that inside is. Okay. We basically right here have a composition of functions. I've got a function on the outside. I've got sine is on the outside. And on the inside, I've got this inverse tangent of uh, 1 over 10. We are going to do just like we've done composition functions in the past. We're going to deal with the inside first. We're going to solve, simplify, do that. And then we're going to take whatever we get there and do the outside function of that. So we're going to always start on the inside. So the only information I gave us is that inverse of tan is 1 over 10. Okay, Is that a positive or a negative number? So what quadrant am I in? Quadrant 1. Okay. So we're going to draw a triangle in quadrant 1. I'm going to label sides 1 and 10. Now, what side, how do I know which is what side? What are 1 and 10? Y over X, that's true. I also, if we think about opposite adjacent and hypotenuse, O over A, TOA. So my opposite is 1, my adjacent is 10. And so I've got O, A, and I need H. And we're doing this of this angle down here. And I actually don't know or honestly care what that angle is. I don't at all care what that angle is. I'm okay. I'm going to be able to deal with all of this without knowing that. So let's go find our H because we're going to need that to find our um, sine. So I'll do 1 squared plus 10 squared equals C squared or H squared or whatever you want to call it. 1 plus 100 equals c squared, 101 equals c squared, square root of 101 equals c. So my hypotenuse is square root of 101. Okay, we've done everything that we can with this tan, inverse tan of 1 over 10. We've done all that we can. Now we're ready to do the outside function. Can we do sine of this angle, sine of that triangle? Yeah, we could do sine, right? What's sine? O over H. We could do sine of this angle. So I think of that as sine of theta equals 1 over root 101. And then we can rationalize that. Root 101 over 101.
Now, number four says check your answers to number three in the calculator. So we just practiced plugging into the calculator. Let's plug into the calculator the original equation for us, sine of tan to the negative first of 0.1. sine, and then second tan point one, close all my parentheses, that gives me 0 0.0995. Now, let's check something really quick. What if I was in radians? Do you think that would impact my answer? What do we think? Yes, no. So I use some yeses. Okay, let me do the exact same thing now that I'm in radians. I didn't. Do you know why it doesn't change my answer? Remember earlier when I told you about mode, I said we have to be talking in the same language, right? If I put in degrees, they need to know I'm talking in degrees. If I'm putting in radians, they need to know I'm talking in radians. Did I put any angle in here? No, right? All I'm dealing with right now is ratios. I'm essentially bypassing the whole angle conversation. I never once knew what this angle was. I'm just worrying about the ratio. The ratio is the same regardless of what mode you're in. So I just wanted to show you if you could be in either mode. Okay, so when I did this in the calculator, we just got, and again, it doesn't matter on mode, 0 0.995, 0 0.0995. Let's go see if when we do square root of 101 divided by 101, if that gives me the same thing. Square root of 101 divided by 101. Oh, it does give me the same ratio. So we are good. Whether I do it by hand or put in the calculator, it's the same answer. Questions on that one? We got three more like that. So let's do another one, okay? Let's do tan, uh, number C together. Tan of cosecant, okay? So again, just like we were doing before, we always start with the inside. So start with your inside function. Cosecant goes with which function? Sine. And it's positive. So what quadrant am I going to be in if sine is positive? We're going to go to quad one, right? Okay, when I go to quad one, I'm going to label one of my sides two, one of my sides three. What's my opposite? What's my adjacent? What's my hypotenuse? What do we have? H over, oh, very good. Alaya even flipped it for us. So we're in quadrant one. <laughs> Good enough. H is three, O is two. I do not know my A. Can you find your A? Yeah, go ahead and find your A. You guys get the same answer as me? Hey, at this point, I've done all that I can with the inside. Can we now do tan of this triangle? Sure, right? Tan is going to be A over A. O over A. Yes, O over A. And you might have said that. Maybe I messed up. So we are going to do tan of theta. And again, it doesn't matter what theta is. It's going to be O over A, which I can simplify down to be 2 root 5 over 5. So basically, we're just trying to whatever is in But you need the information in the parentheses to set up a triangle so you can find whatever's in front. Okay, we're going to plug that into the calculator as well, okay? When I plug this into the calculator, I see tan. That's going to be fine and easy. Tan. There's no cosecant button. What am I going to press instead of cosecant? So we're not going to do one over sine. Remember, we're going to flip the inside, the ratio, the parentheses. So we're going to go sine to the negative one, and then instead of three over two, we're going to flip that to two over three.
And that should be right. We messed it up twice yesterday with C, so hopefully this one's it. Okay, I think that's right. So again, when you're doing inverses, you don't want to do one over the inverse of sine, one over the inverse of cosine. You do that with normal sines and cosines. You can do one over sine, one over tan. But when you do inverses, we have to do sine to the negative one, and we have to flip or reciprocate the um, ratio. And so I got point, um, eight nine four four. I want to see if two square root five divided by five is the same thing, and it is. So we are good. Okay. We've got B and D together. Do you want me to keep walking with you or do you want to try one on your own? Let me keep walking with you. Let's do B together and then I'll let you try D by yourself. Does that seem fair? Okay, let's do B together. Where do I start? What'd, what'd you say? I know which quadrant is in. Good, what quadrant am I going to be in? Good, why? Good, two over three is positive. I'm going to be in quadrant one. So draw your triangle. Now, as I've drawn my triangle in quadrant one, I need to label it. Two and three go where? O over H. Then what do I do? Okay. Pythagorean theorem, good. I think we just did this one, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Once you've done Pythagorean theorem, then what are we going to do? The secant of that. Do we remember what secant is in terms of O's and A's and H's? H over A. It's the um, reciprocal of cosine. So we're going to split cosine. We're going to go H over A. Oh, that's not good. This H over A. And then we can simplify that. It'll be three root five over five. Okay. Now again, we're checking this in the calculator. Somebody yesterday asked me, they're like, do we have to keep checking in the calculator? No, we're just practicing putting in the calculator and doing it by hand. So you're welcome to do whatever you want, but in this, what we're doing right now is just a check. So if you have your calculator, I think it's nice to check. Okay, what do we do when we enter this in the calculator? Bless you, bless you. Because secant is a normal trig function, I am actually going to do one over cosine to represent secant. Okay, that's because secant is not being raised to the negative first. So when it's a normal secant, a normal cotangent, a normal cosecant, you can do one over that number. Then I'm going to do inverse sine of 2 over 3, just like we would normally do, because that's all, um, we don't need to adjust anything there. So I'll do 1 divided by cosine, and then I'll do second sine 2 divided by 3. And I get 1.3416. And let's see if that's the same thing as um, 3 root 5 divided by 5. And it is. So 1.3416. So we've done three of them. We've checked them all. I'm going to challenge you. Why don't you try D right now on your own? 
Okay, go ahead and try D on your own. All right, I've got my answer on the board and I'm gonna type it in the calculator in a second. This is in the old one. Go back to the page. So we skip this and look at the next We're at the top of the next page, I think. All right, let me get my calculator out so I can show that it works. You want us to go straight from Um, I don't think you can simplify. I mean, if I do, oh, yes. Uh, yes, simplify the radical, yes. But I think once I've done that, I can't simplify anything else. Mm -hmm. So I'll go cosine, second, sine, negative one divided by five. I get 0.9798 and then two root six divided by five is the same thing. So it all works out. Right, maybe five or six. What I did want to do though in the last little bit of class is look at your study guide and do a few more of these kind of problems with the unit circle. So um, I'm going to jump over to the study guide in a second. Um, your homework for seven, technically I'll collect it on Monday. What I would do is have it done for class on Friday. So I would do it tonight. So then you don't have twice the homework, but that will be due next time I see you. So in person on, on Monday will be probably when I grab it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so again, you do need your unit circle memorized for this test. And that's why I had you do it a while ago so that now we're just kind of brushing up on it. We're not like just having three days to memorize it all. So I'm going to jump over to my study guide actually, and I'm going to ignore the first little bit. That's all kind of word problems. I'll go over some of those in a video for you guys. Um, but what I want to go is to the next side that, um, the second sheet of paper, essentially the one that says review for the test. Four six four eight. This the front and back of this is really what your no calculator part of the test will be. This is the unit circle set that you got to know. So you'll get your no calculator part first, and we'll just all be this kind of stuff, and we'll do a few examples so you can kind of see the difference. The first two pages, the word problems, that's all calculator stuff. So just so you can kind of get a heads up on what to do, how to separate it as we go. What I actually might think, maybe think is a better use of our time than what I did with um, C period is maybe we'll just see how many of these, um, I don't know, maybe we'll do the evens. We'll see how many of our even numbers that we can do right now. And we can see the difference between them as we do them. Because right now they're all kind of intermixed and I did that on purpose so that we could look at those as we go. And I do not need a calculator. So these first two, what kind of trig are they? Are they normal or are they inverse? Inverse. inverse. What's my answer gonna be then? What, kind, what type of answer am I looking for here? Is gonna be a fraction, is it gonna be an angle? Angle. Because this is what we've all been, what we've been, just been doing for the whole day. 
angles. So when I have this raised to the negative one, your answer should be an angle. Did I tell us in the directions what, what mode to be in? No, so then you can be in any mode. I would probably do both just to double check, okay? So we're doing inverse sine of negative root two over two. Okay, yes. Oh, I have it in person. A couple of you, I didn't give it to. Who else didn't get it? I probably have that right all right, what quadrant am I looking in if it's um, negative root two over two? Inverse sine is only in two quadrants. Oh, quadrant four. Quadrant four. Sine, and this might be something I read at the top of my page. Inverse sine is in quadrant one and four. What's inverse cosine in? One and two. Mm -hmm. And what about inverse tangent? Same as sine, good, one and four. Good, there are gonna be lots of places where negative root two over two is, but I only care about the sine and I only care about in quadrant four. And sine is what, X or Y? Y. So I'm asking myself, where in quadrant four do I have a Y that's negative root two over two? I, in my head, am also thinking, is it a 30, 45, or 60 degree angle? Which one has a root two over two? 45, good. So I'm looking for the 45 degree angle in quadrant four. What would that be? You're welcome to use your unit circles, but I'm gonna tell you, you won't get one on the test. 315, good. And then what is that in radians? Does anyone know? What's the denominator at least? Seven pi over four. Okay, now we'll do inverse tangent of one. First, what quadrant is that in? One. Tangent is what in terms of X and Y? Y over X. So we're thinking, okay, what angle has a Y and an X that are the same? So they'll cross out and give me one. Forty-five. And it's forty-five because it's in quadrant one. What's my um, radian for forty-five? I over four. Good. Let's jump down to the next part. Are these inverses? Nope, these are normal. We practiced these on a quiz earlier, right? So we are looking now for the ratio. So my answer now is not an angle, it's the ratio. Answer is ratio. Okay. So I'm doing cosecant of seven pi over six, sorry. You mean radian? Nope, I mean ratio. Ratio is like a fraction. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's gonna be like one half, uh, one, zero, undefined, root two over two. So cosecant of seven pi over six, what's cosecant? What's cosecant? Sine, one over sine. And so that's the same thing as one over y. Seven pi over six, do you remember which angle is that? A 30 at 45 or a 60? 30. But Alaya, you said 60 and then you said 30. What was it that changed your mind? Because I know when you go up, the bottom gets smaller. And yes, when you go up, the bottom gets smaller. So the bigger number is the smaller angle, 30. 7 pi over 6 is 30. And my 30 angle is um, root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. And so I want 1 over my y. What would 1 over 1 half be? 2. You could also think if it's the reciprocal of y, you can just do the reciprocal of one half. That answer is going to be two. Now, if I am in the second quadrant, if I am at seven pi over six, is this going to be a positive or negative two? And I'm doing sine. Pretty positive. In the second quadrant, all students take calculus. 
7 pi, oh wait, am I in the second quadrant? No, what quadrant am I in? Mm -hmm. I'm in the third quadrant. How do you, how do I know I'm in the third quadrant? 7 pi over 6, is that bigger or smaller than 1 pi? Bigger, I'm a little bit bigger than um, 180. I'm a little bit bigger down here, so I'm in quadrant three. So that is negative. Those are both negative, actually. If that is a lot for you, I know something Miss Ludington does that um, I think is cool. She always has her kids write like the positive negatives. And so that could be something that you remember instead. Oh, I did it wrong in quadrant two. It's only helpful if you do it right. So that might be helpful if I know I'm in quadrant three and I'm looking at why I know why it's going to be negative. So that if that's helpful to do the positive negatives, that's good for you too. Okay. I know I said I'm going to do as many of these as I can. I want to bump down to number 14 and, and 16 really quick because this is the composition ones like we were just doing, correct? When we do a composition one, where do I start? <laughs> on the inside, so we're gonna worry about cosecant of pi over two. Now we actually can do cosecant of pi over two. Cosecant is what in terms of X or Y or sine or cosine? Sine, but it's one over sine or one over Y. Can you tell me what my Y value at pi over two is? That's your 90, right? It's zero comma one. So we're gonna do one over one. What's that gonna be? One, good. I'm not done yet though, because I have to do the inverse sine of that. So now I'm gonna do my inverse sine of one. So now I ask myself, what angle has a sine of one? What angle has a Y of one? 90, we were just there. That's okay, 90 pi over two. Both of those are okay answers. Yesterday we did this and I, I don't remember who it was, but somebody was a little bit out of shape because it was the same answer. And they're like, why is it like, is it always gonna go back to the same answer? No, not necessarily. Sine and cosine kind of relate to each other or sine and cosecant relate to each other. But if we look at 16, they won't go back to each other. Let's do this last one together, okay? I've got inverse sine of cotangent of three pi over four. Okay, what do I do first on these compositions? To the inside. So we're gonna do cotangent of three pi over four. Good, X over Y. And do we know what the um, like coordinate points at three pi over two are? It's a 45, so we've got our root twos over twos. It's in that second quadrant. So I know cotangent is gonna be negative eventually. If it's helpful for you, you can just make your X negative. It doesn't matter. And you can do your little math out or you can see if we're gonna divide the X and the Y and they're the same, what is my final answer gonna be? Positive or negative? Negative. Negative, good. So my inside is that negative one. Am I done? No, what do I need to do? Good, we're gonna do inverse sine of that. So I'm gonna ask myself what angle has a sine or a Y of negative one? Mm -mm, that has an X of negative one. 270 or 3 pi over 2. See how those are different angles this time. I know that it's not fun that you guys don't get to review with me tomorrow, but again, your review is all that you have to do. Um, and your four seven, I do have office hours on Monday and I'll go through the review and make a video on some more of these problems. Okay. And I'll post that to your class tomorrow. Okay.